So hi guys, in advance, if I sound very different compared to how I normally am, that is because uh, this this three week flu cold has royally wrecked me, but I'm finally well enough to start doing things again, but my sinuses are still being a bitch. And ironically enough, in, those, in that time frame, I was hit with extreme inspiration to get stuff done and record some story times. It's been a long time since I've actually done a like story time story time like this. Um, and the reason was because, well, I just honestly, I didn't think of anything. I know it sounds weird, but sometimes when you, when you do something a lot, you get burnt out on it. And I didn't think I could have that with story times because I remember being like, I know I have a lot more stuff that's happened in my life and blah 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 but I just I couldn't think of any and then literally I was in bed and I was listening to uh one of Ready to Glare's videos uh you should totally check her out I think she's great and I was it was one of her older videos and she was talking about like this like, really sketchy interview she had and it just like it triggered it triggered one of my actually my technically my first interview that like royally messed me up and it was my first real interview um i should say real it was for a retail job that i didn't get but uh that's the more that's the little uh catalyst to the story so uh let's get our paper asmr here and let's get started all right so it was in 2013 this was Sorry about that jump cut. One of my neighbors is very rude. Actually, it wasn't my neighbors. It was probably just some asshole on the street. But, okay. The year was 2013. And in this year, it was early 2013. So Cody had been like recently living with us. I was going to school part time. And I needed a job. I had lost my job at the time being a teacher's aide. Uh, again, budget cuts. I wasn't fired or anything. Um. And again, I was going to school part-time, and so my parents offered to help in that time, and my parents are going through an extremely, extremely hard time financially. Uh, Cody had no money. He just started working, too, and he was making minimum wage with college debt. So, you know, do the math. We weren't doing well. Um, so I was looking for work, and I was getting nothing, and I was getting really discouraged. Uh, 2013 and 2014 were, were, was a very hard time for me. It was hard because, like, that's kind of when, at least in my age group, that's when, like, everyone needed a fucking job and no one could get a job because uh, out here, out in California, Southern California specifically, um, not to get too bad, but when Obamacare came out the, the year for the section that I lived in, uh, it really fucked over a lot of people in retail. Uh, not everybody, obviously. I, would, I don't want to start that. But in the area I was in, it really fucked over a lot of jobs. A lot of people who were making full-time hours were now cut to almost nothing. And a lot of bigger businesses, this is the bigger business's fault, not the Obamacare fault. They decided, you know what we'll do? Uh, we'll hire a fuck ton of people, give them no hours, so that way we don't have to pay them for health insurance is pretty much what their gist was. So a lot of people were getting jobs, but you were getting jobs where you would be working maybe eight hours a week. That was it. So, you know, I, was, I wasn't used to that. I was used to having a full-time job, you know, and now I was looking for something part-time because I was going to school part-time. And so... This interview was for a pretty famous sandwich shop that I got I got a call back for. And I was very excited because this sandwich shop at the time, uh, the one that I applied to was within walking distance of my parents' house. I was still living with my parents. And by walking distance, I mean it was less than a seven minute walk. So I could literally walk to work because at that time, I didn't drive yet. And so I thought it was perfect. It was great. You know, I... and. Myself and my brother went to this pretty famous sub shop all the time, and I was I was very hopeful. I was like, maybe this is a sign. This is meant to be. Blah blah blah. So uh, I got a call back, and the call was for the interview to be at another sandwich shop, and it was a sandwich shop an hour away from the one that was 
that I applied to. And I've, I, I've always hated this in retail because a lot of people apply to places close to them because of transportation reasons. A lot of them normally, not always, they choose places really close by in case of transportation issues, you know? Uh, at least, where, again, where I live, uh, the public transit system really sucks. Uh, a friend of mine had to use the train system and she would have to get to work either two hours before her shift and then wait two hours after to go home because of just how how terrible the bus schedules were and the area that she lived in compared to where she worked and just it, it wasn't a good time like like the the early the early 2010s were, were not a good time for a lot of people um so anyway uh it was a pain, but my parents were willing to take me, so that was very helpful, you know, but even, I remember my mom was even like, why, for the sandwich shop that you applied to, why are they making you do an interview an hour a fucking way? It makes no sense, and it's an hour away for a chain restaurant. It wasn't like, you know, only four or five sandwich shops of this company are in this section of California, so it makes sense they're spread apart. No, like, there's literally, like, almost one on... They're kind of becoming the way of Starbucks a little bit for this this sandwich shop chain, especially back then. And so, uh, went to the interview, and it, for me, was very weird. Now you might be asking, Michelle, wait, did you interview for your teacher's aid job? <laughs> Technically, no, I, I did not exactly. Uh, I did get the job because a friend of mine's parent was a teacher, and they needed help, and so she, I mean, they, I had a resume, and I did have recommended, she, I didn't, I didn't get the job just because I knew somebody, like, I was actually good with kids, and I'd done a lot of babysitting, and a lot of other stuff, to, like, on top of that, so it wasn't just, like, oh, yeah, they can give me a job, it was, like, my, my friend's mom knew I was, I was good for it, and I did interview with the principal, but it, like, wasn't really an interview, it was, it was weird, it was nice, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, a, I should, okay, I shouldn't say it was, like, see, I'm already rambling, this is, this is what you guys sign up for, uh, but, you know, it was very, it was very, very, very chill, I should say. It was very, you know, it wasn't very stressful. Uh, as for this was, which was also ridiculous because it was a fucking sandwich shop. Now, when I walked in, I was expecting, again, because we had driven a fucking hour, that this sandwich shop, maybe it was like a corporate office or something, which sounds like really weird, but you gotta remember... Even though I was technically an adult, I was very naive at this time. And so I remember being like, oh, that's, you know, and so we it was just another sandwich shop. There was nothing special that it. it was just another sandwich shop. It was slightly bigger, which I'm going to come back to in a minute because that is important. And so when I walked in, the sandwich shop was full of people, full of people holding resumes, nicely dressed, makeup, hair done, everything. It was full. And I thought, oh, okay, this is a little awkward, but they must have closed this one shop down for the day so that way we can all do interviews in this one day. Like, again, that's my rational brain thinking. That's not all what fucking happened because during the interview process, we had a lot of people come in, look around at us really fucking weird and try to order their goddamn sandwiches and then like get through the line. So it was really hard. Some poor people were trying to focus on their interview and then you're hearing people in the back being like, what bread do you want? Okay, and, and, and how would you like that prepared? So like people's sentences would be cut off and that sandwich shop had a break room. They had a break room. Because I saw one of the sandwich employees go into a back room and I peeked over as well as a couple other people who were probably thinking the same thing I did because none of us were talking to each other. Uh, we saw chairs, a TV, a nice little back room, which is fucking break room. Now, granted, obviously the break room probably couldn't hold all the fucking people in it. But what you could have done was you could have done the proper thing, which I've had in a couple of, of retail um, interview places where... Usually the general manager will have people sit outside. They'll come out. They'll call a name. They're like, oh, so-and-so, uh, -so, can you come here, please? And then, or so-and-so, it's your turn or whatever. And then you would go into a private one-on-one -on -one conversation with the manager 
in the break room or in their office if they have an office, but it was, you know, kind of personal and not so invasive. And so it was very, very awkward because all of us were here and, and the general manager was in the middle of the sandwich shop. So it wasn't like it was a table in, in the corner, in the back, blah, blah, blah. Like you were in the middle and they, I remember uh, when they, cause that manager was in the middle of an interview when I walked in. Um, I remember I kind of like, I waited to like ask someone. And then I finally asked someone because the, the general manager didn't fucking call any names. I'm like, where do we, uh, sign up? I, I, I was supposed to come here for an interview at, at so and so. They're like, yeah, we all were. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Like, do we, do we like sign a paper? Is there a, like a line? And then before the person could answer, the manager went next and everybody kind of just looked at each other. And then like two people got up and then one person sat down and then they went, it was, it was so unorganized. It was so unorganized. It was totally unprofessional. And again, I know it was a sandwich shop, but again, it's a pretty high chain sandwich shop to where you should have some form of professional ability. And I know it's, that's not a fucking word that I just, I just said, but trust me you have you have no idea how much this this shit bothers me because i i had interviews at a fucking mcdonald's okay and i know like a lot of people shit on mcdonald's but mcdonald's my mcdonald's interview had a better higher standard than this pretty famous sandwich shop did and you know it, it's it's just it's sad it's sad that like the place that gets memed is the one that's like this now, I also feel I should say for legal reasons, obviously, probably, most likely, probably and most likely, not all of this chain sandwich shops are like this, but I I, I, I just couldn't believe this is how at least it went. Because remember, this was my first retail interview that I had gotten, you know, and again, I was used to having a, uh, a like teaching job, a full-time job. I mean, yes, I was a teacher's aide, but it was a full-time job, you know, I woke up early, let out late, it was the whole, whole shebang, so when it got, finally got time for my turn, because I just decided to stand up the fastest, uh, I, I went over there, and I did my interview, and I thought it went fine, you know, uh, the manager did say the, uh, you know, looking at my resume, like, how come you're uh, you're working here if you used to work in a school district? And I was like, oh, well, it's close to my house and I come here all the time. And and then the manager like was really snarky because a lot of people don't know, but um, in most resumes, I don't know so much now, but back then, like you kind of, it was important to put your address on your resume. And she like looked at it. She's like, you don't live close to here. And I'm like, I, I know. And then I, I asked her, I was like, this is for the shop on so-and-so, isn't it? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, then why would you ask me if I live close to this location when I'm interviewing for the location that is close to my house? Unless this is a different interview. And then she just kind of like stopped and stared at me. And, and again, I know I was an adult at the time, But this was a grown-ass woman compared to me. And she just stared at me like I had slapped her. When I'd honestly, like, I was I was confused. I, I didn't understand the point. And so I, I, I you know, uh, I pretty much, I sat back down once my interview was done. And I texted my mom because I didn't have my own fucking car, you know. And then there was a person who went, uh, after me, and it was another. It was another girl, and oh my god, this girl. Um, she had some balls on her. I'm gonna be real, and uh, I later found out that she got the job. So here's here's why, I I think it's it's amazing and not in a good way. So this girl came up, and she was also very loud. A lot of people, I myself included, we were pretty quiet because we're in the middle of this fucking sandwich shop in front of everybody else who's listening to us and the conversation because we all want the same fucking position at the sandwich shop and we knew there weren't that many positions open because the sandwich shop has been there a while so it wasn't like you know 
eight people were going to be getting hired realistically. It probably was going to be like two or three, you know, um, when this entire, this entire sandwich shop was filled with people. And so, uh, you know, text my mom and the girl goes and she starts going. And one of the questions that the interviewer asked, I remember was something like, Oh, why did you quit your last job? You know, or something like that. Why did you, what happened to your last job? And the girl, the girl says, well, I used to work for, uh, I used to work for, uh, this chain, but, uh, my boyfriend, uh, he came to my old workplace and he shot up the sandwich shop. And I was just, all of us, literally everyone in the interview just stopped. Even the sandwich, poor sandwich employees in the back who were like cutting up stuff for the next sandwiches were just like, It was the most unsettling quiet I'd ever been in. And I'm not saying it is in a joking way. Like, and she wasn't saying it in a joking way. And the manager was like, oh, I, I, see, you're, I see you're honest. And the girl was like, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's okay, though. I broke up with him. And that's why he shot up, he shot up my workplace. And everyone was just like, oh. Okay. And it kind of freaked me out because I didn't hear about that in the news and not a lot of people did. So I'm assuming that the guy uh, didn't shoot up the place, but did go in with a gun, which is also very unsettling, you know, uh, it's not a funny joking matter. But then she was going up and then she was, and the, the girl just kept going. The girl kept going where she was like, yeah, and I used to bring my problems into the workplace and I would constantly be like smoking weed in the back and blah, 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 blah. And by the way, weed wasn't legal back then. And it was just, it, she just was going off and, and she was super bubbly and happy about it. And the general manager seemed really into it for some reason. And, and everybody else and myself were just like looking at each other and like really like, stone faced shocked the employees at this poor sandwich shop were shocked and the whole interview went through and the manager looked at the girl's resume and put her number in her phone and we saw that because she specifically like looked at the resume put a number in because smartphones weren't as common as they are now back then they were getting more common but not everybody had them and so a lot of people, including myself, decided to wait the fuck outside because if people like that were getting hired at that sandwich shop location, uh, a lot of us didn't want that fucking job. So we waited outside and I remember I was talking to somebody um, and then my mom pulled up and I, I went home and I never got a call back. I never got an interview, but uh, about three weeks later, uh, my little brother and I went to that sandwich shop, the one close to my house, and guess who was working behind the counter? It was the girl with the crazy boyfriend. You know, the girl who talked about bringing all of her issues into the workplace and the girl who did. And I, I, I just walked in and she recognized me too, which was what was really funny. Was and By the way, I didn't have like crazy colored hair back then. I was in a phase where I didn't. So uh, what had happened was we get there and my brother orders a sandwich and she's like oh wait weren't you one of the girls at the interview yeah you were the one in the cute red blazer i had this like i still have this like really bright cute red blazer that i wear with an all black outfit so it's like it's actually really cute like i like that blazer a lot and i was like oh yeah that was me she's like oh i'm so sad you didn't get the job you seemed very very qualified and i'm like thanks okay i'd like to order my sandwich now like but yeah that's a uh, uh, and from what I know, she still works at the sandwich shop today. And that girl is now a manager. So good for her. Good for her for getting her life together. I'm, I'm not knocking that. I just remember being that that was my very first interview I'd ever had for retail. And then the most honest girl won and turned her life around from what I saw the few bits of her working at that sandwich shop years later. And, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's my story. I honest to God don't know how I attract these kinds of people. 
I, I started like writing down a lot of memories that I've had because I've had so many and I've had so many things to like, uh, let me know if you guys want to have a video on like how terrible those fucking, like how to get a job websites are. Cause I have a whole thing for that. I wrote out, uh, I have a whole thing for a, t a couple of other terrible interviews I've done. And, and I'm serious. Like, I want to know if you guys want to hear those or if I'm just wasting my time. Um, but this was fun. I know I probably sound like a, a whale or I'm underwater right now because of how nasally I am. And I'm sorry. But uh, the decongested stuff makes me even more loopy than I already am. And, and I, 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 I'm already getting better. So I want to I wanna be like all there i've i've had some pretty weird instances huh, over this sickness and junk so all right i really am rambling now i love you guys thank you so much for listening and as always i will see you next time bye